Light up the world with a little more truth. I got a couple more words. What is up, my boys? It is your boy Nisha here, and today uh, we got ourselves a new Konami blog article. I'm doing this video at like one in the morning, almost two, but um, I just thought I would review with you guys because you know this is kind of going to be like uh, just uh, looking ahead to what's happening with Yu-Gi-Oh this summer, and um, yeah, I thought it, it was worth discussing. You know all these things that are going to happen. You know. So, June 12th, uh, the new ban list takes effect, um, although it was already revealed last month, um, it takes effect Monday. So, um, no more Norton. <laughs> so, June 23rd, uh, Pendulum Evolution uh, comes out. Um, it's Everything in the set is going to be um, either ultra or super rare, so if you want to upgrade your Magician's Rarities, this is a good set to do that, I'm hoping for a ultra rare dragon pit magician but if that's not the case then you know oh well and uh magician is one of those decks where i just think a lot of people say it's not going to be good in link format I, like i understand it's not going to be as good but it's still going to be good i mean we, we have duelist alliance we have zark um the deck still has a bunch of crazy combos even if they go only pendulum summon one monster per turn they don't need too much back row anyway so um, it's definitely not a bad, um, well, it, it was kind of a bad idea on Konami's part, not just, like, to make it an entire set, but at the same time, it's like we got upgraded rarity, so it's kind of like a, like, it, it, like, nobody really wins here, because it's like, the budget players are going to have to spend more if they really want to make magicians, and... Uh, the non-budget players, um, I, I guess they won't even look at this deck because they don't have a budget, so they can just go play Zoo. Um, <laughs> so next, um, I'll also note that, you know, it's going to be legal for all the, um, World Championship events and qualifiers in Europe and North America and South America and Central America and whatever, you know. So next we have the dates of the World Championship qualifiers. So June 24th and 25th is the um, WC is the Nationals for Europe, um, and that same weekend is the Nationals for Central America. Uh, July 1st and 2nd is for South America. Um, July 2nd, specifically uh, only the second. So I guess because it's a smaller country, um, it's Oceania, and then um, July 8th and 9th it's for North America which is going to be the last one before Worlds takes place. So, um, July 7th, we have Battles of Legend Light Revenge releasing, and um, you get the Minerva reprint, you get a whole bunch of new stuff, you get new Gladiator Beasts, you get a few new cards from Arc 5, Ho I'm hoping for Super Heavy Samurais, and uh, there's going to be a lot of cool prints uh, in this set. So, And there's also a Crystal Winger reprint in here, and everything in this set is going to be uh, ultra rare as well. Uh, I think ultra or secret, or is it just completely ultra? I forgot, but either way, everything in this set is going to be high rarity, so you don't have to worry about them looking too ugly. Um, so July 21st, we get the Link Strike starter deck, which is um, going to be the turning point for Yu-Gi-Oh! where the entire game changes to Link format. Or as some people are starting to say, that I heard is Link Era. It's gonna be a whole new chapter of video, you know. After these first five series, Links are really bringing something, like not just bringing something to the game, but changing it as well. So it kind of is a new era. Uh, also, you know, um, they're gonna have mats available with the new um, board placement, you know, the punch'em scales being at the bottom. I mean, in the spell and track right zone and the two um, link zones as well. And now, um, more than ever, your zones are gonna be real important. So make sure that if you um, already, like, I, I'm, I'm like, if, if you already know like your card placements, I mean, I'm sure everybody knows where everything goes, like spell and chakra zone, monster zone, 
link zone, pendulum zone, or everything like that. But if you use a map without um, zones on them, or if you use maybe a spell ground or something, just uh, be wary of you know the pointers and everything like that because now zones are getting more important than ever. Um, a new card was revealed the other day um, that actually applies to zones as well, um, like uh, vertical zones. So um, it's definitely going to be something more regulated in Yu-Gi-Oh. So uh, July twenty-second, twenty-third, Yu-Gi-Oh day. Um, honestly, I never really care too much about these, but. Um, I guess it's good promotion for the game. I, I honestly don't know. So July 29th, the last weekend in July is Dakota Duel Sneak Peek, which is pretty cool. Um, we're, we're pretty much getting it like a week after uh, the starter deck for Link Monsters. So a week after the starter deck for Link Monsters come out, everybody's going to pick up at least a copy of that starter deck. Or I'm gonna buy singles of like Link Spider and Deco Talker since those are the two most important Link monsters from that um, deck. I mean, Honeybot is Cyverse only, so unless you're making like pure Cyverse or some Cyverse Turbo deck, then you won't really care about Honeybot. And even then, Honeybot is pretty mediocre. So, Code of the Duelist, uh, releases the week after the sneak peek on August 4th. So, Link Monsters come in, we're gonna get Mrs. Radiant, we're gonna get Firewall Dragon, we're gonna get the Go Keys, the Trick Stars, which is gonna be annoying. It's kinda gonna be like a Morphing Jar <laughs> revived. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, they're, they even gave us the name of the, uh, sneak peek card. Uh, Vendred Hound Horde card for some rabid zombie dog excitement. So maybe it's a zombie, maybe it's going to be a beast type because it's a dog. We don't know yet. So August 5th, OTS Pack 5 releases. Um, you know, I guess if you uh, attend tournaments in the next season, uh, you know, like the August, like after Worlds, that, uh, like the season of August to july again you know for next year well for next era i should say because you know it's link era it's going to be the first um uh Yu -Gi -Oh competitive season of link era so it definitely is going to be a big deal and uh with the new website and everything as well so i i do think this is a, a pretty nice time to release it so the week after the ots5 pack releases um, we get to see the official world championships. Um, so I heard that originally it was planned to be um, hosted in Europe, but after uh, the stuff like the Manchester attacks and like the stabbings and uh, the Area Grande concert and everything like that, uh, they moved it back to Japan just for safety precautions. Um, ISIS is a real threat, guys. Um, it, it really isn't a joke, and people do lose their lives. So. Um, Konami definitely doesn't want that stain on their record, uh, so they just played the safe card and put it back in Japan. Um, I hope nobody really minds. So late August, uh, new tournament season. All right, uh, I was just talking about that uh, earlier. So regionals and YCS uh, events start up again uh, late August. So maybe we're probably going to get the ban list before that, just to ease into. The, the next uh, season, well, maybe not ease, like <laughs> just to uh, transition into the next uh, regional season, we're probably gonna get the ban list before the, the new regional and YCS Yu-Gi-Oh! competitive season starts up, just for convenience. And uh, August 25th, uh, the Megatons are coming out, definitely gonna be a lot of good reprints in this one. Uh, Desires has already been confirmed. Uh, we got a few Link Monsters. For some reason, they're giving us Blue Eyes and Dark Mission again without any alternate artwork. If it was alternate artwork, I, I wouldn't complain. But it's like, it's the same artwork. It's the same artwork we've been having for years, all right? It's like, what's the point? <laughs> it's not some like collector's edition type of thing. At this point, it's just, it's just annoying. It's like Sonic with, with Green Hill Zone. It's like, we, we have it enough, all right? <laughs> Just...
honestly, people are gonna buy the like the tins anyway. Like people are gonna buy Sonic Forces anyway. But it's like, why is this here? This just feels like a waste of space. Although the design on the tins definitely isn't bad. I think it's because it's a TCG exclusive thing. Like I don't think the OCG gets Mega Packs. I, I could be wrong. But I think it's a TCG exclusive thing. And uh, because the movie came out in America this year, not last year like it was supposed to, I think they're still just um, hanging on to that first Yu-Gi-Oh feeling. Um, especially with uh, the last one on September 8th, we got the Legendary Duelist booster releasing, and we are getting the new Red Eye support, the new Amazon support, um, the new Legendary Fisherman support as well. I don't know what else is in there, but those are the three that I know will definitely be in there. And um, August 26th and 27th, pretty much two weeks after the uh, World Championship, we're going to get our first YCS um, official uh, for YCS Rimini and YCS Toronto. Um, usually YCS Rimini, I, I usually watch those streams. Th those YCS Rimini is usually streamed. Um, you know, just as a, a way to really uh, start up the new season, you know, they, they stream YCS Remedy, and it, it's, it's usually the, probably the one that I've consistently watched throughout the past three years, a uh, few years, I said through years, I mean, anyway, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much what's happening for Yu-Gi-Oh! this summer, um, definitely not bad, usually, I, I feel like summer is the best time to play Yu-Gi-Oh!, Unless if you're not playing competitively, because if you're playing competitively, then you're probably going to be very stressed with like nationals and like worlds and everything. So um, it's probably more tense around this time if you're not if you're like one of those big competitive players. But if you're a casual player, man, like summer for Yu-Gi-Oh is awesome, man. Especially with the Reigns animes is is still going strong, and um, we're getting all these new sets. We're getting Minerva reprint. New Gladiator Beast, new Dinosaur support, which I know a lot of people are going to hop onto simply because of how uh, many people actually got the original Dinosaur structure deck, so. And then the Magician stuff, I, I'm still, like, I, I don't think it was necessary to make it a, an entire set. We could have just kept the starter deck and, like, made it all hollow and then maybe I pay you an extra five dollars or something maybe a fifteen dollars for an entirely hollow starter deck I think would have been a good thing to do it would have been something new we are getting new uh, link monsters as well so um, I think this summer is gonna be a real good time just to sit down and really try to learn um, the ins and outs of link monsters um, all the texts you know the uh, everything that you know you really should know um moving forward because uh unless you're really invested into this current season which i doubt you are um, i mean i don't think any big competitive players watch my videos but i could be wrong um i think this summer is a real good time just to take a step back and look at what's gonna happen moving forward i know a good number of people are getting mad at link format or link era I think we should start calling it actually it's it's actually pretty pretty nice but um i i think it's a a fresh new start for the game like this is definitely something that we wouldn't have expected ever and you, you can get mad and say oh like konami's just killing like the low tier decks like they're making what's bad even worse but at the same time you know it kind of evens us the playing field a little bit because, you know, now decks like Yangzing Dinos actually have a way better chance of actually topping versus, you know, around like this format where it's something more rogue. You know, decks like Mermails, Metal Foes, not as much. Uh, Light Sword is definitely going to have a fun time with this. Uh, especially with the new Light Swords coming out in Code of the Duelist, man. Man. <laughs> it's going it, to be... It's going to be a crazy format. Like, starting off is going to be a rough start, and a lot of people are going to switch to decks that are that are pretty mediocre and kind of slow, just because they want to see how it does in Link Format. And then once everything settles down, we have a few YCSs, a few events, we see what tops. Um, like, 
the competitive players don't really pay attention to what tops like at the beginning of the season because usually the beginning of the season is the time where most people bring in like crazy uh once in a lifetime decks that you never see again like last year it was like buster blader shadow and uh utopic ignite and it, it was a whole bunch of stuff that we never saw before or see it again after that point but it, you know it was directly after um well it was the start of the new season so it's uh way more likely to be um for people to get creative you know and then after we see what's good, it's like, oh, that, that's what's good? All right, everybody hops onto it. I'm not saying that I, I think everybody that plays you competitively is sheep, because that's not always the, the um, situation, but because such a big number are, it kind of makes the casual community uh, doubt, well, not doubt, kind of uh, resent the competitive community. So, yeah. Anyway, this was Nisha here, just giving you guys a little um, update on what's coming ahead and, you know, my thoughts on it. But, um, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace.